In this video, I'll be showing you how to install the forum. So first things first, you'll want to go to extensions, available, click load from, and then in the search part, type in the forum, and you should see the option to install it. So click install. Once that's installed, apply and restart UI in the install tab, and then you should see the forum in the extension table. Now that we have the forum installed, you should be able to see the deform tab. So click on it. So just to begin, I won't be able to cover everything about deform today as it's quite complex. So if you do have any more further questions, you can either check out the deform wiki, which is listed here, or the official deform discord. So to begin, we have the run tab and over here you'll find your standard options. So stuff like sampler, steps, width and height. One thing to know that if you do want to keep the video the same between each video generation, You'll want to manually import a random seed value into the seed box. And if you want to keep it at random, you just want to keep that at minus one. We do have other options here, but the main thing that you should know is probably the restore faces option. And this will be especially useful for when you're actually generating faces. And one more thing to note that if you do hover over anything, it will give you a brief description of what it does. So this can be quite useful. Now moving on to keyframes, we'll come back to this, but for now just note the actual max amount of frames. So in this example, we're using 120 frames. And now if you go on to prompts, you should see all the prompts that are being used within the actual video. And what these numbers mean in the quotation marks at the start is that at zero frames, we're gonna generate this prompt over here. Once it reaches 30 frames, the prompt will change into this one. 60, it will change into this one and 90, it'll change into this one. So just to show you an example of what this prompt is, I'm gonna click generate. And once it's finished generating, one thing about the form is that you actually have to click on this button here, click here after generation to actually show the video. Now this was the result I was able to get. Your results may look different, and that's probably because I'm using the Rev animated model. The form will work with any model. This is just the model that I prefer to use. Now let's say I want to change this prompt. The way to do this would be first, delete everything in the prompt box. And now starting at the zero frame, because that's why I want the initial prompt to start, I'm going to type in quotation mark, zero quotation mark, semicolon, and another set of quotation marks, and then put in the prompt that I want. And here is what the video looks like. Now let's say halfway through the video, I want to actually change the prompt that is used. To do this, first you need to type in comma, then click enter, and then type in the frame number which you want to change the prompt. So I'm going to put 40, semicolon, and just like before, you will want to put in the prompt. So what you'll see now is that I put in three different prompts. So the video will change prompts three times within the video. And another thing you should notice is that I put a comma after each one except the final one. So if you do put a comma after the final line, you'll get this error message. And so the simplest way to avoid that is to always make sure that you're including a comma after every line except the actual last one. Another thing, if you do want to include negative prompts within the actual prompt, go to the prompt that you want, do a space, dash, dash, N-E-G, and then type in the actual negative prompt that you want. So for example, I'm going to put in cloudy. Now over here, we have prompt positive and prompts negative. And like it says here, words in here will be added to the start of all positive prompts. Now this is especially useful if I want to change between the style of artist that I use throughout the video. So for example, in the prompts positive box, I could put in this prompt here. And now if I change the actual prompt box to only include artist's name, and now if I click generate, and now looking at the video, you should be able to see that the style changes every 40 frames. Moving on to the keyframe section, we have the cadence value. And what the cadence value does at higher values is sort of give a blending effect towards your videos. And at lower values, it will give your videos a much more choppier feel. And this is because, as it says, it's just the number of in-between frames that will not be directly diffused. Moving on, we have the strength value. And what that does is, as it says, the amount of influence the previous frame has on the next one. So at higher values, it more heavily influence it. And at lower values, it won't. So if you're looking for more consistency within your actual video, I'd recommend increasing that. Not too much though, as at higher values, it gives sort of a blurry effect towards your videos. And if you do want less consistency with your video, I'd recommend lowering this value. So moving on, we have animation mode. And just for today, I'll only be covering 2D and 3D mode. Now, depending on the one you pick will affect how much control you have over the video. 
So if I select 2D, I can do stuff like move the video along the X and Y axis. So for example, I could give the impression that the video is moving to the left as time goes on. With 3D, I'll be able to do everything I can with 2D, but also alongside that, I'll have access to the actual Z axis as well. So with 2D, we only have the X and Y axis to move our videos along. With 3D, we'll have X, Y and the Z axis as well. And just to prove my point, if you select 2D, you'll only have access to the X and Y axis. And if you select 3D, you'll have access to the X, Y and also Z axis. Now going back to 2D and scrolling down, you should see that we have this zoom section here. And what this is doing is basically saying at zero frames, start zooming by this amount. And now I inputted this equation into ChatGPT and this was the resultant graph I was given. And with the zoom value, if you want, you don't have to put in equations. You could just put in normal numbers as well. So you could specify a specific number. But whatever you do, do not put the value zero into the actual zoom box like this. Because what will happen if I now go click generate, yeah, I get this really weird effect that takes place in the video. Now moving on, we have angle. Now, if I wanted the video to rotate every frame, I just have to type in a value here. So right now I'm telling it at the zero frame, start rotating the video four degrees every single frame. And the transform center X and Y is just like the zoom effect, except this time it's just for the specific axis in question. We also have translation X and Y, so you can move the video right to left or up and down as the video is moving. So if I put in 10 here, the video will start moving to the right, 10 pixels every single frame. Now, if I want to reverse that in a later frame, all I could do is type in comma, then type in the frame where I want to reverse it. So I'm going to say 60, semicolon, and then now I just put in minus whatever number I want, so 15. Now, what I'm saying here is at the zeroth frame, start moving to the right, 10 pixels per frame. Once it reaches 60, however, start reversing that by minus 15 pixels per frame. Now, moving on to the init tab, you should see the image init tab. And what this is, is basically giving the forum a starting image to work with. So now if I select use in it, and I have two options here, I can either paste the web URL of the actual image, or if I have the image on my PC, I just need to actually copy the actual image path towards it. And as you can see, the form is using this image as a way to influence the start of the video. And I could change the amount of influence this image has by going to the strength parameter over here. So setting this low will make sure that the image does not have as much as an effect on the actual start of the video. Now, if you go to the output tab, you'll find standard settings. So stuff like FPS, adding soundtracks or upscaling. Each of them have a little text explaining what they do. So they should be fairly self-explanatory. Now, one more thing to note, let's say you changed all your deformed settings and you want to save them for later. To do this is relatively easy. So if you scroll down, you should see the option to actually save settings. And what this does is save a text file in your stable diffusion directory. So as you can see here, I have my deform settings.txt file. So now if I restart stable diffusion and click load all settings or load video settings, depending on how much you want to load, you will be able to get all your settings back. And if you want to save multiple settings file, all you need to do is actually change the text name. So that's all for this video. I know I didn't go into everything, but like I said, if you do want to know more, I highly recommend checking out the wiki or the discord. This was just meant to be a very brief introduction to the forum. So thank you and I'll see you in the next video.